the same time I've been working with Singularity University as faculty coach, and what they're one of the things they're saying is that energy price of energy is going towards zero, which probably is the biggest nightmare of utilities, right? Because when they go towards zero, what to do with the grids if everyone produces their own energy and they create their own? That's what Tesla is claiming that every individual has their own ecosystem of energy production, storage, and consumption. Um, is that happening? How far away from this? What's your point of view towards that prediction? That's a really good question. And I've got, I've got sort of two or two and a half important points. Um, so the, uh, so the general trend, yes, the price of power is going towards zero. Um, but towards zero and zero are two very different things that you can have a very inexpensive commodity that still has value and still can be sold for a penny or something like this. And so um, uh, in terms of our fundamental cost to generate power, I think that we're going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's going to be very tricky to actually get to zero from a fundamental cost perspective. That being said, and this is kind of the, the magic of how money works is that, you know, due to how markets treat energy produced at different times, due to the fact that interest rates are so low right now across the world and negative in some places, that I think from a practical perspective, so again, not the actual cost of generation, but from a practical buying perspective, I think that we might see a situation where we have very consistently negative prices, where there is perhaps too much, consistently too much generation, or because a interest rate from a bank goes negative, um, that more people are just building more new solar plants um, to use money. Um, and that's going to put more energy onto the network and that energy needs to go somewhere. So the network's got to pay people to take it off. Um, I could see that being a, a very real situation where your bank will basically pay you to do stuff with money um, that somebody will figure out, gosh, you know, this will actually make me a quarter percent on my hundred billion my hundred million euro uh, solar field rollout. Does um, that mean if that I sort of separation between people or un entities who produce the energy and entities who broke who do the brokerage on energy? Because if you do brokerage, you don't care if it's negative or positive because either way you have a business. It, 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 exactly right. That I I feel like energy brokers are in a really good place right now. Um, Energy traders, I, I think, are having to learn a bunch of a bunch of new tricks. Um, but yeah, the, the the brokers and the market, um, sorry, the, the the brokers and the um, system operators are in a very good place. And actually, that, that's an important distinction. That in yeah, in 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 all of North America, all of Western Europe, and overwhelmingly most of the rest of the world, the market and the system operators are, are two very different entities. And the system operators always get to make a decision before the market. So the system operators are the ones who are in charge of making sure that your lights actually stay on. Um, so regardless of what the market wants to do or the market wants to push power onto the network, the system operator can always actually shut something down or disconnect a generation source. Um, so Nikki, maybe that's another interesting thing that could happen is that we might see increasingly increasing conflict between basically what the what the actual copper and steel of the network is able to do compared to what the market wants it to do. Interesting. Thomas has a question. Thomas, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I have three mm -hmm. points. Uh, point one is that um, right outside of Vienna in Tulnerfeld, there's a, a cool new startup developing um, uh, drones, but on a, the principle of, of solar, uh, not, not, um, not solar, but of, of not drones with, with rotators, but with wings. Mm -hmm. So they can fly many kilometers with camera systems along power grids. 
The second thing is the city of Vienna introduced like four years ago in the hackathon uh, a map. Uh, go upstairs. 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 Um, um, they introduced with the city of Vienna map, you can have a look of how much energy you will get. How much sun do you get in a year? So for each roof in Vienna, that's it's already calculated based on this data. That's very interesting to, to know how much energy you can get and, and whether an investment is made sen makes sense or not. And the third point is was just today I, I talked to a friend of mine. She is living outside of Bratislava, called a place called Senet. And uh, she wants to, to have uh, solar power as well. So it really got mainstream. Uh, people really want to buy this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. they, they want energy and they want to be producers as well. And, and, but I think what's really important to, to not overheat the grid is, is to have batteries or, or some kind of storage uh, in each place. So you can more regulate uh, the... the, the, the if there's too much energy produced. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're bringing up a good point around, um, around uh, our, our, our lack of access to grid scale storage, that it's easy to have batteries for your house. It's very hard to have batteries for your factory or your apartment building. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a pretty unsolved problem. The best we've got as humans is things like um, hydroelectric dams where you can pump water back up behind the dam as basically gravity storage. Um, there's a really cool company that's doing uh, basically a very heavy train on a hill and they slowly move the train up when power is cheap and they roll the train back down with electric motors when the power is expensive. Um, turns out that's, that works. Um, but what we need are more of basically that big, um, a big Tesla battery pack in Western Australia. I think it paid for itself. I think it was a $200 million project. I think it paid for itself within four months um, because it was able to handle those 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 dips and rises in where different energy was was needing to be either stored or or shed from the network. Um, so yeah, I I I agree, and I um, I don't know if the solution is more dense batteries in lots of homes because then you have a control problem where is do you have a connection into everybody's home now to charge and discharge these batteries that sounds like a very complex problem lots of things can go wrong with that lots of batteries can break down um but that is perhaps a better solution in some cases than you know one big giant battery on the outskirts of vienna um that you know if that breaks down then the, maybe the whole city has a problem suddenly so less resilient um i don't know the best solution there and i think it's probably going to be very region dependent, um, resource access dependent. If you have hydroelectric dams, maybe you can use them. If you have geothermal, maybe you can use them. Um, but, uh, but, but at the end of the day, we, we are way better at generating power than we are at storing power. That if we could increase our energy factor of batteries by about, a, by about 10, we would solve so many problems in the utility industry. Heck, I have a question because you're talking to people who are not in the utility space. Mm -hmm. well, Oops. Um, you, is that me or you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hearing you a second. I'm sorry about that. What, where energy is going, what's happening in the energy space with production, with storage, with transport, with consumption. What does this, so like fast forward 2025, how's our life different in a way we are attracted, we're attached to the energy space. And we I'm talking about citizens, people like you have in the room. Mm -hmm. What's going to change for us? Oh, and Marcus looks like you wanted to chime in. 
I'm just picking up from from the conversation. So, as I see it, it's because we don't have a real time live marketplace, and instead, what we've got is we've got everything which is very lumpy. So, so right now, you know, if we have to distribute large amounts of ampage, then then we're just restricted by the size of the pipes, the um, you know, the cables which can transmit it, sort of overheat if we put too much and, and it's inefficient if we, if we don't put enough and it's low, low copper and all the rest of it. Do you see the point at which we will enter a real time live marketplace so that real time, if, uh, if it looks like we've got an oversupply, then me as a consumer can start turning a lot of stuff on <laughs> which otherwise I wouldn't have on because of the way in which it's doing it, because it's super cheap at this second. And another time I will reverse it. And then I guess picking up on Nikki's, as we start moving towards a lower power requirement, then I'm guessing some of the discussions about how much we have to invest to produce big time generation capability starts going away as well. So I think I've just sort of had my eyes opened to the fact that what appears to be quite boring is in fact extremely exciting and dynamic. Or have I just been misled? I, I think it's exciting and dynamic and I'm glad at least one other person does. Um, no, I, it's, I, I think that, you know, you've brought up a couple of, a couple of really valuable things and, Maybe a couple of quick, quick comments before I, um, I answer my thoughts on a real time market. So, um, in the first place, real time in the context of the energy industry can have a whole bunch of different meanings. Um, so sometimes in when we're when we're talking to utility folks, real time means sub cycle, meaning faster than. 50 hertz or faster than 60 hertz. That means faster than 1 50th of a second or faster than 1 60th of a second. And when we're talking about real time in that context, we're talking about something that's a protective device, like a fuse in your house or a breaker on the network, where uh, if there's a problem, you can cut electricity off very quickly, usually a mechanical process. And so sometimes that's real time. Other times, real time means, well, it's okay to have a communication delay. You know, light does take a little bit of time to move around. Computers do take a little bit of time to process things. So sometimes real time is, you know, well, we can wait a millisecond or two mm. for, for that particular answer. And then another version of real time is uh, when we talk to people who are mostly dealing with, you know, maintenance of equipment and utility hardware is supposed to last at least 15 years, big transformers maybe 60, 100 years. Real time for those guys, sometime this week is usually good enough. Um, so real time has a pretty big spread, but kind of uh, that, that's a little bit splitting hairs. Um, I, think that, I think that what you're talking about in terms of a real time transaction market or something that's fast-ish, like a, like a stock market, um, where we can be actively pulling more power off the network or maybe changing your air conditioner or changing your heating to maybe stop using quite as much power. Um, I, 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 I think that that's, that, that, that that's happening in some places um, and will eventually happen everywhere. But I don't think that the average person is gonna care enough for it to matter. That you know, your power bill is, is gonna be probably not the top of your concerns for today. You've got a business, you've got a, a car payment, you might have a, a mortgage on your house, you gotta, you know, pick up the kids, you gotta, you know, go to school. That your 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 power cost is going to be quite low. Um, and so it may not make sense for you to suddenly run around the house and turn off all the lights or turn on all the the air conditioners um, when you get a text message on your phone or something like this. Um, so what I think is going to happen um, I suspect is a much more uh, automated and passive response. And there's a few companies out there like these guys. 
um, who build hardware and software to help with exactly that kind of thing. So Ohm Connect, uh, they used to basically do kind of what I mentioned. They'd send you a text message and say, hey, the power is really expensive right now. Um, if, you, if you turn off all your lights, we'll give you $5. Um, and the reason they were able to do that is that you take turning off your lights was effectively putting negative demand into the network that was worth $10. And so they made a few bucks. Um, that was okay. And a few excited people like me were using them. Um, but where they got a lot more traction was when they started doing that automatically. Mm -hmm. So they would, uh, they now work with appliance manufacturers <clears throat> so that they can install a little piece of hardware in your refrigerator and your hot water heater and stuff like this. And how that looks to you as a consumer is, wow, this hot water heater that's got this one little extra piece is 50% cheaper than anything else on the market. Or it, it might even just be given to me for free because the hot water heater manufacturer knows that they're now going to be a, an energy trader mm -hmm. and they'll make back the cost of the, of the hot water heater. So I think that's the trend that we're going to see more of where there's without you having to do anything, without you having to interact in any way, um, you are going to be basically watching your, how power gets used in your house and business get sort of managed by other, other systems and other cool. software. Yeah. And I think that um, just a question or comment really, and I think that where that leads is, is going back, I presume to, to grid cure, you know, it's the data, the analytics behind it, because value potentially will shift from the energy manufacturers and that sort of whole supply chain, you know, assuming that energy cost goes to zero to the data that yeah. you can then use for optimizing a system or maybe predicting usage or, you know, whatever it is, but creates value for the system and, you know, potentially for society as well, if, uh, if it's used more effectively to, you know, move towards the renewable side rather than, you know, traditional uh, carbon type fuels. It, 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 spot on. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Um, because even if we move to this area, Nikki, I'm finally coming back to your point. If we move in a direction of, um, hey, big traditional utilities don't make sense anymore. It's now 10,000 homes generating their own power, storing power locally, transacting amongst themselves. Even if we move in that direction and maybe traditional utilities start going out of business, um, it's still going to be a network of a whole bunch of things connected to other things um, that can all you know go wrong or break or have needing a software update or a software patch a better control system um, and that's where we play we sit in the middle of all of that so today we sell to eon and uk power networks and pacific gas and electric tomorrow we might sell to you know niles excellent home energy service company um, or something like this. Uh, but it's going to be a very long time before it's not a very networked and connected, like physically connected system. Um, and so long as that physically connected system exists, we've got business. Tech, we're getting to the top of the hour, sharp on time. Thank you so much. What a great, what a great job you're doing. Um, amazing. I'm really looking forward to meet you again. Uh, yeah, Nikki wasn't joking. I'm moving to Finland for three months. Uh, so <laughs> COVID travel safety allowing, um, I will be a little bit closer, I think, to most of you than I am currently. And so I would love to love to meet in person. Yeah. Where are you moving to in Finland? Uh, to, to Helsinki. Nice city. At, I've, I've never been. This is very much sight unseen. It's a lovely city. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, awesome. Nikki, thanks so much for having me. It's always fun to, to share more of our story. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Tech. That's great. I'm being cold. See you very soon. All the best. And All right. Have a great rest of your day. Yours is just beginning. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Take care.